Hey finders and welcome back to Fortune Finds. Tati finally came out with her own beauty line called Tati Beauty. If you guys watch my videos, you guys know I'm a huge Tati Westbrook fan. Like I love her. She has really inspired me to create my YouTube channel. Her and her company released their first product, which is the Tati Beauty Volume 1 Textured Neutrals. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I did my makeup three different times using this palette in three very different ways. One of those ways being today's look. I was actually inspired by Tati herself for two out of the three looks. This one being the one that she wore in her Tati Beauty reveal video. I loved her makeup in that video and I was a little like kind of upset that she didn't teach us how she did that makeup. My creepy ass as always went on her YouTube and just like took screenshots of her makeup. And then the second one being the look that Scott Barnes did where he came on her channel and did her makeup using her Tati Beauty palette. So I recreated that and that will be the second one. And then the third one was just the first look that I did upon receiving this palette. In case you don't know much about the palette, I'll just run you guys through this really quickly. So there's essentially six different shades. This is Memory. So that is Memory in a matte, in a sequin, in a metallic, and a glitter. It is labeled what each of the finish is. So basically it's like having your favorite favorite shadow, as Tati says, in different formulas. This is memory, this is ritual, this is story, soothe, aura, and poet. Mattes are really pretty, they blend really nicely, and what I do love about each and every one of them is that say you go in with a little bit too much of black, you're making a smoky eye like I did today, and it's just too harsh in the corner. You can hop up in memory and grab the sequin one and blend that one over it, and it really does fade that black out. However, I'm gonna say, if you go in with a matte in here and it's just too much, these are the kind of eyeshadows that I don't wanna say blend into nothing because they definitely stay on your lid, but the more you blend them, the more they fade. So these are definitely user-friendly shadows in my opinion. Actually, I had my sister over here yesterday. I was doing her makeup for my makeup school. I had to do some submissions and we used this palette and I love this palette. I have to say right off the bat, this is one of my favorite palettes, I think, in my collection. My sister does not like this palette. We were playing with this yesterday and I'm not saying this to like be negative. I'm just giving you two points of views on the same kind of thing. We went ahead and did a halo eye. It was kind of a disaster in the end. So we went and we were gonna do a purple halo. So I went in with Poet and my sister was getting annoyed because I was, as I was doing it, she was watching. She's like one of those people where you do her makeup and she just like cannot be quiet. She has to talk the entire time and guide you through what she likes and what she doesn't like. So she's one of those. No shade, but kind of shade. We were going in with Poet and I was putting it in the outer corner and inner corner of her eye and she was like, why doesn't this color build up? So she was like, can I play with it? So she went in, she took a brush, she was putting it on the inner corner and the outer corner and at the end of it, she was kind of just like, this is not pigmented enough. I like a shadow where I go in and I put it on and it's just there. She's like, this is a deep, deep purple. It should just come up as a deep, deep purple. Whereas I like this palette because I find that I can build up the shades. So if you're someone that likes a shadow that you can build upon, and I'm talking about the mattes strictly here, then this is the kind of eyeshadow palette for you. Now, if you're someone who's more like my sister and doesn't really love sitting down and doing her makeup for 45 minutes, you know, wants to sit down and do her makeup in 15, 20 minutes tops, and you just want that pigment right on, I think that you could get a lot more pigment in the mattes by going in with your finger. And yes, I know that's weird. Normally we go in with like shimmers or metallics with our fingers. That's definitely a way to do it. I would suggest making your brush a little bit moist with some setting spray to dampen your brush and then going in with the shade that'll definitely pack on a little bit more pigment. This is really user friendly. I think if you're someone that tends to go in with a heavy hand when it comes to eyeshadow, this is really great. Let's go line by line. So the mattes I think I've already covered. They're really beautiful. Again, you can build upon the shades. They're easy to blend out. They're easy to tone down. They're just really user friendly. I like mattes that you can build upon. Then moving on to the sequins. I love these. I think they're so pretty. I love how it's just like a subtle hint of glitter so you can really see the pigment in the background super beautiful but then it's just those like hits and flecks of colors now this is definitely the kind of shadow where it's gonna be more fun for the people who you're hanging out with those pretty flecks of glitter are gonna come out when you're like living your life and you're out in the daylight or you're out at dinner and the light just hits you in a certain way people are just gonna see them you're not gonna see them that much when you're sitting in front of a vanity putting it on that's not really the best lighting and it's not really gonna pick up the best of the glitter in the sequin. The metallics, they go on pretty pigmented with a brush. I would recommend dampening your brush, especially if you do your face first and 
then go in with this shadow. This shadow can dust a little bit all over. I'm the kind of girl where if I know there's a little bit fallout and I know I'm running the risk of there possibly being fallout, I do go ahead and do my eyes. I did my eyes first, I think, in every portion of this video. So that doesn't really bother me. But if you're someone that doesn't like your palette to get dusty, there's a lot of fallout within the pan, a lot of dust in the pan. And as you can see, I've had this for a month and this looks pretty well loved. As far as the glitters go, I'm gonna tell you now, when Tati did her reveal video, she said that this is your last step. Yesterday when I did my sister's makeup and we did the halo eye, we tried to put Aura in the center of her halo. And then she wanted me to go in and build up the purple around it because again, to her, the purple wasn't deep enough. It wasn't pigmented enough. She just wasn't a fan of it. That being said, there was literal glitter all over her face. It was a disaster. Hati did allude to the fact that you could go in with this and then build around it. Go in with the glitters last. Otherwise, if you're gonna fluff the glitters, the glitters are going to fluff everywhere. They're gonna get all over your face. The best thing about these glitters though, and you can see during this swatch that I'm gonna show you, is that it does leave your finger. I have so many glitters in my collection where I put them on my finger and I run them across my lid and there's more glitter on my finger than there is the lid. These really do transfer onto the lid. Tati said that all of the glitter comes off of your fingers. That's not true. Not all of the glitter comes off of your fingers. Honestly, the amount of glitter that was left on her finger, my finger has been coated with glitter way more than her finger in that video ever was. And I've used this several times, like I said. That was a bummer for me just because I think she hyped that up so much. I was just expecting it all to come off my finger like it did in her reveal video, but it didn't. So that was kind of let down for me. But again, go in with these last. Don't go in with these and then fluff around them and buff them in. It's going to be a disaster. You're going to mess up your face. Overall, I have to say, I really love this palette. This is definitely something different. If you are a makeup addict, if you collect makeup and you're looking for something to add in addition to your collection that's different, you should definitely buy this. Tati knocked it out of the park. I'm a really big fan. I cannot wait to see what else she comes up with. But with that being said, I do want to dive into the application process with you guys. Again, I'm going to show you three different looks. I just want to mention before I do go ahead and get into it that if you are not yet subscribed, please please be sure to do so. Also click that bell button next to it. This way you get a notification every time I'm uploading a new video. And as always, if you guys have any questions, please be sure to leave it down below in the comments section. I'm more than happy to address whatever your questions may be. I'm starting off this look by prepping my lids using a concealer. Grabbing Aura Matte on a flat brush, I'm going to use this shade to set my concealer. Taking Soothe Matte on that same brush, I'm going to use this to start deepening out my crease. Now I'm taking a clean fluffy brush to soften and blend out Soothe. Taking Memory Sequin on a pencil brush and focusing that on the outer corner of my eye to start deepening that corner to create a lifted, more elongated cat eye effect. You guys know I love this. Memory Matte on a flat angled brush, I'm going to take this darker formula of Memory to help further darken that upper and lower outer third because the sequin shade wasn't building up to be as dark as I wanted it to be. Make sure to connect it. I find that it makes the overall look look really polished in the end rather than just something that was slapped on and thrown together. Taking a tapered clean blending brush to blend it all out. This will help ensure that it doesn't fluff everywhere. If you use a tapered blending brush, it's really gonna keep that pigment to the sections that you applied it in the first place. Memory Matte, again, I'm gonna take that on an angled brush this time and I'm going to stamp this along my lash line to help give a coal liner look. Taking Aura Matte on a flat brush and packing that on the inner third of the eye. This is going to help me look more awake. It's going to make my eyes look bigger. It's just going to make them look more delicious. Memory Metallic. Stamping that on with my finger, I'm placing that where Memory meets Aura to help blend the colors together and bring some fun to the eye. Reinforcing that inner corner brightness with Aura Matte, which I'll apply with my finger to help pack the most pigment possible. Soothe matte with a flat fluffy brush, I'm moving on to the lower lash line, placing that right where memory ends and bringing that towards the inner corner. Ritual matte on the same brush to help deepen and further smoke out that lower lash line. Grabbing my black Marc Jacobs eyeliner to coat that lower water line. I just want to give a little bit more intensity. I want to make it look more dramatic. Memory glitter and stamping that all over the memory sequin I originally went in with. I wanted a little bit more drama and this was definitely the answer. Look how gorgeous this shade is. Memory metallic on a flat brush to brighten up that inner corner. Now for my favorite color, Soothe Glitter, which I'm applying to the inner corner using my finger. 
For the last and final step, I'm applying Aura Matte to the inner corner using a small pencil brush and then coating my lashes with some mascara. And then, voila, the finished makeup look. I was feeling sassy that night. My eyes were so sparkly, oh my god, but I was feeling sass because I was feeling good and I love this makeup look. Hopping into Soothe Sequin, I'm going to put that in the crease as well as underneath the eye. Grabbing Aura Sequin, I'm going to fluff that across the lid and then I'm going to add a little bit more using my finger. This is going to help build up the opaqueness and make the white a little bit more stark. Hopping into Aura Metallic, I'm going to take that on a little brush and I'm just going to put that on the inner corners of the eye to help brighten them up and make myself look a little bit more awake. Now taking Memory Matte, I'm going to take that on a flat brush and I'm just going to line the upper and lower lash lines. Taking Poet Matte, I'm going to put that over the black. And then I'm going to take a blending brush and just blend everything out. I'm going to take a little bit of the Ritual Matte and I'm going to add that to the crease. And I'll put a little bit more in the outer portion of the eye. And then smoke the lower lash line with that Ritual Matte as well. I'm adding some more Aura to make the inner portion of the eye, really the overall lid of the eye, a little bit brighter before then throwing on some lashes, some mascara. I mean, I am definitely no Scott Barnes, but damn, I felt good. I felt like I looked like a million dollars. Mike and I went to Wine Fest that night, and I cannot tell you how many people stopped me to tell me how much they loved my makeup, shine bright like a diamond, look at that glitter, oh my god. And I love a lash. I don't wear a lash enough, but Damn, I should. Moving on to the third and final look. I've already prepped my eyes with concealer and I'm just taking Aura Matte with a fluffy brush to set the concealer in place. And hopping into Soothe Matte on a fluffy brush to start deepening out the crease before going in with a clean fluffy brush to help blend and fade out that Soothe shade. Using Ritual Matte to start deepening out my outer corner and then bringing what's ever left on my brush into my crease and inner corner to really blend that all together and really make the look become one. Story matte on a pencil brush. I wanted to bring out a little bit more warmth into the crease. You can see that goes on really pigmented, but I wasn't afraid to pack on the shadow because look at how much that shade blends out. Ritual matte to reinforce that outer third once more, and I'm dipping in several times to build it up to the depth I want it to be before blending it out with a clean fluffy brush. Stamping Aura Matte on the inner portion of my eye using my fingers. This helps make the eye appear bigger and more awake, which I've said so many times, but this time it's also helped cleaning up some of that brown that's left all over while in the process of blending out the shades. Ritual Metallic, taking this beautiful shade on my finger and stamping that over where I just applied Aura Matte. Ritual Matte once again to help deepen out the outer third. These shadows are so nice, but as you can see, the more you blend and fluff, the more the shades lose their pigment, which is why I've gone back and forth so much in each of these looks. Aura Matte to brighten up the brow bone and inner corners of my eye. And here comes the fun, applying Story Glitter with my finger and laying that over exactly where I put Ritual. Then I applied a liquid brown eyeliner to amp up the look and threw on some mascara.
And then this is the finished makeup look before I threw my full face on, which you'll see right here. This is on my Insta stories. I was half asleep on the couch, exhausted, but my makeup was on fleek. This makeup was bomb. I loved it, so sparkly. It was just a mood and I loved it with this jacket. Oh my God. Here's me taking embarrassing selfies. And then this is me catching myself in the most unflattering selfie position ever, but I'm gonna post it regardless of how many chins I have. Look at that makeup. All right guys, and that concludes this makeup video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more tutorials like this, maybe three looks using one palette, definitely be sure to leave it a big thumbs up down below. That way I know that you are into this kind of content. I don't wanna have to pick up a palette and give you guys the review, give you one look and then that be done with it. I like to give you guys some options. I like to incorporate more than one look just because I really love playing with palettes and I want you guys to see the very various ways that you can use a palette. If you do recreate any of these looks, please be sure to tag me on Instagram. I will link my handle here as well as all the information where you can find me down below. If you are not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and also click that bell button again because I would love to have you here on my channel. I would love for you to become a part of my little Fortune Finds family. With that being said, I had a great time as always. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you in my next one. Bye finders. Mwah.